This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author and host of The Dr. John Deloney Show, is my co-host today as we take your questions about your mental wellness, your boundaries, your relationships, your money, your career, your job, your life right here on The Ramsey Show. The phone number is 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Spencer is with us in uh, Indiana to start off this hour. Hey, Spencer, what's up? Hey, Dave. Um, I have quite a mess I've made for myself, um, but we're work- me and my wife are working on trying to get out. Cool. We're on baby step two. And uh, I have a whole bunch of student loans. Um, I haven't consolidated them yet, um, partly because of the the way that the repayment is right now. Everything's kind of on forbearance. Uh, I've been making the minimum payment despite the forbearance. But um, my question is this. I have a car loan that's about $30,000, and I have a bunch of student loans well, I have some student loans that are less than 30000 but my payment for my car is about $500, and my payment for each of the student loans are like all together are about $1,000. And normally, I, if I'm following your plan right, I would pay the smallest loans off first, but I'm just wondering if I'll have more money to pay back with if I pay my car off first. Nope. Works exactly the same math. Math doesn't change. Okay. The um, you're because you're, let, let's just pretend you're paying two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars a month on debt. Okay. okay. And then you're making a, a car payment, or you're not making a car payment. Either one, you're still going to plow through the total of the debt in exactly the same amount of time. It does not okay. speed it up to get rid of the big payment at all. The only thing that would speed it up is if you got rid of a bigger interest rate, which is not what we teach, but that would actually speed it up. Um, but cha- paying, but getting rid of the bigger payment that you're making anyway doesn't change a thing. So what do you guys make a year? Um, 320 Oh, that's good. What do you do yeah. for a living? I'm a nurse anesthetist. Ah, and there's the student loans. So, yeah, what kind of mess did you make? How much is the student loan debt? Right now, it's at two seventy five. That a boy. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. What else? What else? Well, I have. Uh, we have all, one of our cars is almost paid off. We have about five thousand left on it, mm-hmm. and then our other car is about thirty. Okay, that's it. Student loans and cars. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have a. We have a house mm-hmm. we have a mortgage and we actually have two houses one's getting rented out but um really we have our mortgage but that's the rest what, of our what's debt. that what's that house the rental house worth uh it's worth maybe 200 and what do you owe um, on it? about that we just it was really like i said it's kind of messy so yeah. i got I, I would go ahead and get i would go ahead and get that sold that's not a blessing that's a curse well, the reason I didn't sell it was because I haven't had it for that long, and okay. I'm worried I'd pay a whole bunch of taxes on it. You're not paying taxes. You're not going to make any money. Okay. If you don't make money on it, you don't pay taxes. Okay. And was it a residence? Yeah, we 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 were in it for just a few months, but it. it How long have you been out of it? House. How long have you been out of it? Uh, about two months. Oh, you can sell it with no taxes at all. No matter what your profit okay. is, up to a half million dollars married filing jointly. Yeah, you need to get rid of that thing ASAP, brother, because it's it's a, it's a vampire. It is not going to do anything except suck your blood. So you need to you need to do, be done with that puppy, and the um, and then from there, you know, basically what we're dealing with are the big numbers here. 
are we going to pay 150 a year on this and be done in two years and have no life? Yeah. And that's what I would that prescribe. Was our hope. That's what I would prescribe. Quit acting like you okay. make a lot of money and instead act like you're a broke person. Because, by the way, you're a broke person who actually actually makes a lot of money, But uh, uh, which is wonderful. Great news is you have a horrible hole that you're in and you have a big old shovel to dig out. So that's wonderful. But, I mean, if you live on $100,000 a year and you put the rest of it towards this debt, you could be done in two years. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. Well, it's not hope. It's, it's I mean, math. last year I was, yeah, last year I was making 130, I think. Yeah. 140. Yeah. So. All right, Spencer. We're Spencer. Praying we can get better. Spencer. Yeah. I'm going to ask you two questions right in a row and just answer yes or no. Okay. Did you take out $275,000 student loans? Yes. Okay, cool. Period. That conversation's over. I can feel, I can hear you walking around your head staring at the ground. And you cannot get gazelle intent. A, a gazelle can't run away with staring at the at a, one foot in front of it because it's going to trip and fall on its own face. Hold your head up high. You did it. It's over. You own it. And now we're going to be about what comes next. And now you're a nurse anesthetist, which makes a buttload of money. A ton of money. You, so, you help yeah. people now, be now, alive. Yeah, so now go clean up the mess. And in two years, you'll be done. And you'll look back five years from now with a big old pile of money. And you go, God, man. Oh, I almost busted it there. Thank God I decided to, yes. you know, lean into this. Yeah, so lean into it with a smile and go, it's game on, baby. Be aggressive. Game go on, get it. man. Game on. Get it. Get and it. This, oh, I hope it just, hope it works. No. no it's not going to get it. It's no hope. Smack get it, it down. It's math. It's not I. It's not I wish. By God, it's math. I mean, you make two. You make three hundred twenty thousand dollars. Let's put a hundred and fifty a year on two seventy five, and in two years, it's magically gone. You know, I mean, it's this is how it works. But I and I don't really care what your nurse anesthetist friends are doing because they're mathematically stupid. So don't listen to them. Okay, I really don't care if they're buying houses or BMWs or whatever. Sell the stupid house you just moved out of. Get rid of it. It's a problem. It's not a blessing. Uh, you can keep the cars just because you make so stinking much money if you want to keep that $30,000 car, it's okay if you're going to get out of debt in two years or less. If you're not going to get out of debt in two years or less, you need to sell the $30,000 car. But you need to, you, you really you really need to get it. You need to get this done. And you can do it. It's very doable. Now, it, it's, man, I, 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 sometimes I talk to people that have $275,000 in debt and they make $100,000. Or they make sixty five, and I and think that, that, that's a bigger problem, man. I mean, that's a little bitty shovel in a big old hole. You know, you can't you can't do that. So, you know, the good news is you have the blessing of this income. So you have to dial it in and be game on, committed. You and your wife, and go. We don't make three hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. We're not going to act like we make three hundred twenty thousand dollars a year because we have a mess that is bigger than this, and we have to live on nothing. Beans and rice, rice and beans. You don't need to see the inside of a restaurant unless you're working there. You don't need to go on vacation. You need to get out of debt, and you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I can see it, and I can't wait to hear your debt-free scream. It's going to be amazing. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. 
today. People are craving connection. They're craving community. They're craving the energy that comes with humans being with other humans. We hear you, and we're the same way around here, and that's why we're bringing back our life-changing live events. We're going back on the road, and we are not holding back this year. Uh, first up is Wealth Building Live. It's coming to Orlando on Thursday, May 19th. This thing is selling fast. It's almost sold out already. You can still get tickets, though, if you do it. If you're waiting around to buy your ticket, don't. It's about gone. This event gonna to, is going on tour this year. We're going to have other locations to tell you about really soon. Another one this, uh, this spring. It, it's a city that sounds kind of like Las Vegas, but We'll just see. It, it sounds suspiciously like that when you say it, but I'll let you know when I have the contract signed that we can actually go. So uh, good stuff. And four more cities in the fall, including in the or in addition to that in the fall, we're going to be doing our uh, smart conference. Smart conference is back. It's a day-long conference where you get smarter about every area of your life. All of the personalities will be there. Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, George Camel, Christina Ellis, Pedro Latore, and our good friends Craig and Amy Groeschel from Life Church are coming. They're going to be talking about marriage. We're going to be talking about money. We're going to be talking about leadership. We're going to be talking about your mental wellness. We're going to be talking about your career and your job. Every area of your life, by the time you get to the end of the day, you will be smarter. I promise you'll be tired too. be a long day. It's going to be a great day, though. We're excited about it. I haven't gotten to do one of these in a couple of years because of all the garbage going on out there. But October 22nd, Dallas. If you want to learn more about all of our live events as they come online, uh, you can keep up with them at RamseySolutions.com slash events. Going to be good to be back on stage doing these smart conferences again, John. I uh, can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. I've been on the road a lot the last, last few months. And I can't wait to get on. But I've been by myself. And staying in hotels, working with businesses all across the country. I can't wait to get back on the road with the gang. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Get the band back together, yes. baby. It's time. All right. Lynn is with us in Minneapolis. Hi, Lynn. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, John. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I What's... am a huge, huge fan, thank, and I'm debt-free thanks to you, you and your program. So Way thank to you go. So much. <laughs> I am 60 years old. I make 55000 a year as an administrative assistant. And yet I still live paycheck to paycheck because of my high rent, but I love where I live. Mm -hmm. um, my my take-home pay is 2600 a month, and my rent is 1655 which is over half of my take-home pay for a one-bedroom apartment. Um, I've been looking at purchasing a condo, but the ones I like get outbidded, and the older condos, which are more affordable to buy, um, have a high, like $700 in HOA fees, and I'm not comfortable with that high of a fee. Mm -hmm. So my question for you today is, I really like the convenience of renting. I'm wondering if it's in my best interest to purchase something or if it's okay to keep renting. I, I could find a cheaper apartment that's not as nice, but it would be like two hundred dollars less a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, your your twenty six hundred dollar number, if you make fifty thousand, is wrong. Is wrong? Yeah. I, well, twenty six hundred is thirty thousand. You don't have twenty thousand dollars in taxes. Hmm. Do you make fifty a year? Is that what your salary is based on? Are you getting I, a huge Are you getting a huge refund, or are you counting stuff that's coming out of your check? other than taxes when you're telling me what your take-home pay is? Oh, I'm counting, like, that's, like, what it comes out for my benefits and my retirement. Okay. How much and are you putting in so my, How much are you putting in retirement? Um, okay. I do, I, I do 4%, which is required for an 8% match. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I do another 1% on top of that. So that comes to 28.57 a year. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, your benefits expensive? Or are you getting no, a big are you getting a big tax refund every year? I'm I'm not because I also get fossil support and I um, have to pay taxes on that. Okay. So yeah. I just I just keep I don't I just keep out what I need for taxes and, mm -hmm. and I got hit really big this year for some reason. Yeah. I'm still struggling with how we go from a fifty thousand dollar income to a thirty thousand dollar take home pay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find okay. where that money's so, going. Okay, and it didn't go to so retirement. My paychecks are like my paychecks are like thirteen eighty four, mm -hmm. and I get paid. Well, maybe that's and I do get paid twenty six times a year because okay. 
Well, that's a little bit better. Um, so it's a we're, we're, yeah, up, we're up to about thirty-five thousand at this point. But still, there's something. There's still some money. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it's missing. I just don't know where you're what you're doing with it exactly. So, okay. The answer to your question in, in overall, without trying to figure out what to do today about it, is that if you're 60 for the next 30 years, can you imagine what rents are going to do? Yeah, that that scares me because yeah. they they I had an increase one year of $150 yeah. a month. Yeah, and it's like it, that's the problem with being a renter in perpetuation. Yeah. Is it's the largest portion of your income goes to housing and you lose control of how much it increases when you are at the mercy of the landlord. And so you don't want to be a renter for the next 30 years because that's going to, you know, it's going to increase versus if you bought that condo, you know, you you've locked in what it costs you, not counting the HOA fees, but you've locked in your cost per month for the next 30 years. And so I'm moving in some way towards one of these condos and and some method figuring out how I'm going to get there and what have I got to do to cause that to happen because that's a better long-term play for you. We also know that the folks that reach, you know, that reach a million dollar net worth, the vast majority of them, well over 80% of them, the primary source of their wealth is two things, their retirement plans and their paid for house. And so, you know, if you end up with a $700,000, $800,000 net worth, uh, you know, in, in 10 or 15 years over time here, uh, which you probably could do, uh, a portion of that, a third of that, a, 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 two, a half of that or whatever would be your paid for condo that you got paid off in the next 15 years. So I want that stability in your long term plan. That's why we don't want to be a renter long term. But it doesn't mean we're stupid in the short term. And you go out there in the name of not renting anymore, or you go do something foolish and buy something you can't afford. Yeah. Which is what a lot of young couples do. When they get married, they have to rush out and buy a house that they can't afford. Or you get in a bidding war and suddenly you're yeah, way out on thin ice. She was very wise to walk away from those bidding wars. She right. said it went up and I, I, I tapped out. That's right. And that's very, very smart. Michael is in Pasadena, California. Hey, Michael, what's up? How's it going? Thank you for taking my call, um, Dr. John and Dave. Appreciate you both. Sure. How can we help? Yeah, so we're in a little bit of a situation. I, I'll give you the briefest uh, the briefest uh, <laughs> explanation that I can. So basically, my wife and I, we live in, in California currently. Um, we're actually building a house in Arizona. That's where we're from. Uh, so we're building a brand new build. Um, we have money from the previous sale of our house Mm -hmm. um before we moved here we have the cash in our account Mm -hmm. we can pay off all of our student loans and uh potentially have a little bit in savings before Mm -hmm. we go back to phoenix good so we're trying to figure out if we should keep the cash or pay down all of our debt like really aggressively i'd be debt free by the end of the day okay now how how are you going to close on the new build if you don't have any cash so that's the thing. We have cash now. We have like I know. I just I just got rid of all your cash. How are you going? You I offered that as an option. How how are you planning on closing on the new build? Um. Well, we have a little bit of cash, but it it won't be it won't be as much because we have to pay we have to pay some money up front um, just to get the process started. Because okay, if you can, yeah, I want you to put as say hold out just enough to close on the new build, barely, and hold out a little bit of an emergency fund and then i want you to throw the rest of it at this debt and and move to arizona debt free into a new house it's going to change your whole attitude about everything when you do that Uh, it sounds reckless and crazy but you're going to be free and that's what i would do today this is the ramsey show Chaos. 
That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast, you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Stephen and Kaylee are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Wonderful. Thank you for having us, Dave. Well, Good. Honored to have you. Where do you guys live? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, we love Grand Rapids. Welcome to Nashville. Good Thank to have you. you. And how much debt have you paid off? $231,000 and some change. Way to go. And how long did this take you? 25 months. Wow, you're kicking it. And your range of income during that time? We started around 190 and finished around 260. Goodness. What do you guys do for a living? I'm a physician assistant. Oh. Uh -huh. And I'm in dental sales. Oh, both. Wow. Okay, that's a ringing the bell on the income. Well done. So I'm going to guess and say uh, 231 might be a bunch of student loans for the PA. <laughs> yeah. Both of us. Both of you. Yep. All right. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Yep. Um, student loans, and we both had car loans and credit cards. Yeah, and I lived. <laughs> I, I lived my mid twenties like. Uh, she was looking at him. <laughs> well, he looked at her for student loans, and she got him back with the yeah, credit cards. Uh, so um, it's good. Same team, right? Yeah, you got to trade. You got to trade the look back That's and forth. There, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, how long y'all been married? Just six, five months. Five oh my months. gosh! Yeah. Oh, so, so you started you started this separately and then combined it and knocked it out. Well, so yeah, we're a little different. Where we, I mean, I'll let Kaylee tell the story and how we got. So started. we started this just while we were dating. Um, we, I remember, I was sitting at a wedding and like looking around, and I was like, one day we'll probably want to get married. How are we ever gonna afford this? Mm. Um, and I was. I remembered hearing your name a little bit growing up, and I Googled Dave Ramsey and saw the Total Money Makeover. You're sitting at a wedding, and you Googled no. Dave. Oh, okay. I was, I was just going, my goodness. No. Eat the okay. cake. <laughs> okay, I but the, the wedding cake. woke you up, then when you got home, you Googled Dave Yeah, Ramsey. Okay. and right. um, so saw Total Money Makeover, and Stephen picked it up for me at uh, Barnes & Noble, and I read it the following weekend, and probably within the next month, kind of slowly decided to pay off my car tell mm -hmm. him about it a little bit and then we both kind of really got on board um mm -hmm. but we did it was interesting because we were just dating we weren't even engaged at the time and we both were doing our own debt snowballs so it was kind of unique in that way yeah so I, I bought her that book and watched her just get after it and i had my own i guess you can you can say i was davish um, paying off, like trying to aggressively pay off my credit cards. But then I saw how aggressive she was being with her car. And I was like, I want to marry this woman. I got it. <laughs> I, I got to either, I'm, I'm going to have either have to be all in or all out. Yeah, and she, I decided she, to be yeah, all you, in. You just can't be left in the dust here. You got to keep up. I mean, Correct. come on. <laughs> I love how you said like, I started aggressively getting after it. And then I looked over, she was actually aggressively yes, getting she after was it. <laughs> much aggra more aggressive than I was. So yeah. I love it. He had, um, you had two cars at the time, and I feel yeah, like I don't, when I don't you work, paid the one off. Yeah, I had a work vehicle and a regular vehicle, and I was like, Dave would not love that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, uh, I sold my work vehicle and used my personal vehicle as both work and personal and um, started the debt snowball from there. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. This is amazing. I mean, once you yeah. decided to do it, both of you were just, you knocked it down big time. Yeah. 
Looks and so like in the we, middle of this debt is also, did y'all cash flow a wedding too? Mm-hmm. Yep. We wow. cash flowed about two thirds of our wedding. Yep. Um, and it wasn't just our jobs. We had a lot of, we had a lot of side gigs. Um, yeah. <laughs> she picked up uh, shifts in urgent care. Mm-hmm. Uh, she made a ton of money. That's the lucrative thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Picking up um, other people's garbage mm-hmm. and refurbishing <laughs> it and selling it on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and I have a little side lawn mowing business in the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that we we definitely uh, worked a lot more than we played. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah. But you're free. We're yeah. Free. And we were able to pay both of us pay our debt off the week by the week before our wedding. Correct. And oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so that was your finish line goal. We want to we want to marry each other debt free. Well, yeah. it wasn't initially though, and you talk about this on the show a lot. Mm-hmm. Like we thought it would maybe be. We thought that she'd year. inherit a little bit of my debt, and it'd be about five months after the wedding, mm-hmm. six months prior to the wedding, um, and even though we were doing it separately, it felt like we were doing it together. Yeah. You know, constant communication, holding yeah. each other accountable, and encouraging, and encouraging, and. Um, we looked and at competitive. it. Competitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She won. Um, <laughs> she always will, my brother. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get used uh, to that. Yeah. <laughs> so five months before the wedding, we're like, wow, we can, if we, if we put our heads down this summer, we can, we can do this before the wedding and the weekend before we got married, we, uh, we paid it all off. I love it. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, you guys. Very well done. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Constant communication and just being there for each other because we are unique. We weren't married yet. We attacked our snowballs separately, Mm -hmm. but it didn't feel like that because we were constantly going over our budget and holding Mm -hmm. each other accountable to to our budget. I mean, she took me who in my mid-20s would take my tax return and go to Nashville and Mm -hmm. blow it all when I had a ton of debt. (laughs) So The irony is you're in Nashville to do your debt free screen. (laughs) So uh, holding each other accountable and continuously having that that open communication and uh, being on the same page. Being on the same page. Mm. What's the best uh, boyfriend girlfriend disagreement you had over the budgets? <laughs> oh. um, I would say uh, <laughs> when she. I, I know what you're going to say. The vehicles? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <You> go ahead. <laughs> um, this is the newlywed for, game, right? Yeah. <laughs> for, 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 answer very carefully, Stephen. For me, when she was being very aggressive at paying off her vehicle and I was like why did I get her that book um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was when she that's when she kind of came to me and was like you know you should definitely think about this too you have two vehicles and I I, I remember kind of fighting her on that for a while yeah. just because that's just the way I had lived throughout my 20s mm-hmm. um, what, what was oh in my mind it was kind of our like Stephen was saying we would sit down and budget every week probably mm-hmm. and are, um, I would um, underestimate, I guess, the, the budget, and I would, um, he would always say, you probably need just a little bit more money for that, and so we would, that would just be like a, week, a weekly thing where, we're, where we would kind of have different mindsets on things, so now that we're married and that we make our budget together, that was an adjustment as well, yeah. like we just have different minds on things. You guys talk about savers and spenders um, and just probably having little disagreements about, you're probably going to pay a little bit more for groceries than that this week, and I'm like, no, I can probably get by. Um, <laughs> Two dollars is enough. <laughs> well, there there were weeks where like $25 and he was right. dollars had a had to get us through for groceries. Yeah, yeah that's not, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> don't think that's going to work. Yeah. No. <laughs> but now you all make a bunch of money and you get to keep all of it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, cool, it's, man. It's, it's fun. We, uh, we went to New York around Christmas. We're here this weekend. Yeah. Didn't feel bad about spending nine dollars on a beer on broadway like i used to and uh it's more than that and, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't finance yeah, yeah. you paid for uh, it yeah. today instead of four months from now so congratulations and because Thank we you. had just gotten done paying off a of debt we really didn't go on a real honeymoon so we're going to italy in a month hey uh, ding cool. ding yeah. i love it good for you guys well i'm proud of you Thank you, you did very well who were your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you Outside the two of us, um, my parents were really big supporters. Both of them cheered us on along the way. Yeah, my parents have always been there on the way to support me with whatever I choose to do. Um, 
we have a we have a, my college roommate um, and good friend. Him and his wife live in Lansing, Michigan. Nick mm-hmm. and Rachel, they're um, they're in the journey with us. So mm-hmm. it was recently fun to debt free too. Yeah, yeah, they're recently debt free too. So um, having like people our age getting after it with us, all on the same, and you know hanging out with them and talking about the frustrations of it all, uh, it really helped. Yeah, way to go, guys. Way to go. We're proud of you. Thank well you. done. Yeah, thank you. Well done. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you because that's the next chapter, baby. That's the next chapter in this story. Making 260, you ought to be there in 20 minutes. I mean, it shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't take long at all. You got no payments. Life is good. How ordinary people build extraordinary wealth. How you can too. $231,000 paid off in 25 months. Did it separately and together, sort of, in, by communicating. 190 to 260 income. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt free! Yes! <laughs> well done! Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Zach is with us in Oklahoma City. Hey, Zach, how are you? I am uh, doing all right, I guess. Okay, cool. (laughs) How can we help? Uh, Well, this is where the I guess part comes in. It looks like about a 90% chance that I'm going to end up divorced here soon, and I'm trying to figure uh hoping uh dr john can help with some advice on how to just kind of stay focused because this is screwing with me a little bit and i'm not doing perform well at work and stuff so are you are you asking about the okay so back me out here you said about 90 percent, and then i, I got sidetracked here so <laughs> is, i'm assuming you you're not into this this isn't your idea nope okay so what happened um uh, I'll, the short version is that she struggles with borderline personality disorder and does not believe that she needs help. And she has just started making a bunch of ridiculous impulse decisions and then blaming me for the fact that nothing is working out and that we can't afford the marriage counseling and stuff that we need. And she just finally dipped out. Okay. So um, you say there's 10% chance that this isn't going to happen. Is that a, a realistic percentage or is that you just hanging on to hope? The latter. Okay. Has, is there attorneys involved yet? Has she filed on you? Uh, she's not filed anything. If I'm being truthful, I bet that if this goes through, I'll probably end up having to pay for it when I finally get sick of waiting and just decide to move on myself. But all right, so in this situation, here's the person you can deal with, you. And I can hear the bitterness dripping from your language, which I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. I'd be bitter too. I'd be frustrated and sad and upset and all that. But that is clouding all of your judgment, all of your decisions, all the words that come out of your mouth, all the thoughts in your head, your inability to get up and go for a walk or a run in the morning, your work performance, everything. Okay? So... Mm-hmm. You tell me you can't afford to go talk to somebody. I'm telling you, you can't afford not to. Figure it out. Um, okay. Call uh, call like some friends. Her, call a pastor. Call some. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about you. Uh, okay. Hmm. This isn't about her right now. This is about you. Because you, you can't control what she's doing, and she stepped out on you. Okay. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean, and I apologize if I stutter through this. It happens when I get frustrated with situations like it's okay, this. But it's okay. Like, 
what I what I was trying to say is like she is she was the reckless spender in our relationship. I kept trying to wiggle between trying to budget for all of the help that we needed while trying to keep her happy with the impulse purchases she wanted to make. And I'm gonna go see somebody because it sounds kind of bad. But now that she's walked out, I can afford to do so because I ended up having to spend on her reckless decisions. Hold on, hold on, hold but, on. I just told you stop talking about uh-huh. her, and you immediately came back and started blaming her for other stuff. I'm I, oh, sorry. I, I, no, don't be sorry. I'm just, just listen to how much this has poisoned your heart. Okay. And the only thing on planet earth you can control is your thoughts and your actions. And that's it. And that is a powerless, helpless feeling in these moments when someone you love has said, I don't love you anymore. I'm out of here. It's heartbreaking. It's devastating. And yet the only thing you can control is your thoughts and your actions. And so I'd make a phone call today and say, I'm not okay. Every minute of my life is venom and poison towards my wife. She's leaving me and I'm not okay anymore. And I'm using anger and rage and all these other tools to try to prop myself up through this heartbreak. And I need to look somebody in the eye and say, I'm not okay. That's what I mean. Mm, And and so the language that you use, like when we start talking about the... um, you can afford counseling. You circled back and said, well, now that she's out of the way, you see what I'm doing? Instead of just going, yeah, I've actually got the money now. There's two different sets of language saying the exact same thing. And, um, but that's just due to the, that's just your pain. You can, we can hear the pain in your word choices and even in your voice tone. Um, and mm. so, and that's, what's throwing you. Cause I, I'm going to guess John, that, uh, if I were in this situation, I know what I would be doing. Uh, if I were losing focus, it would be because all I'm doing is replaying all of these tapes in my head over and over. And I should have said, and what if I'd have done this and I could have done that. And then if she'd have done that and I'd have said that and, uh, all these ruminations, all these things you're never really going to do. These conversations you plan out never that are never going have. to happen that's right. and you ruminate on them and play 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 on them and all of a sudden the car's driving down the shoulder instead of the middle of the road that's exactly right and you hear the warning track and you go wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not even driving <laughs> and so zach oh, now I- that, uh, now, uh, real quick now that dave mentioned it i forgot one of the main reasons why i wanted to call and ask about this i drive a truck for a living i'm alone for three to four weeks at a time okay that's part of why i think this anger has caused me problems the way i realized that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense and and i know enough about bipolar that a gap missing another person can be devastating to that. So I bet if she was to call, she might be saying, hey, I've been missing my husband for months at a time, for years over year over year. And why do I tell you that? Most of the time in these situations, unless there's just an out of control abuse situation, more everybody's playing a role. And so this vitriol, this anger, this rage, all you're doing is poisoning yourself, hoping she, it rubs off on her, and it's not. It's killing you. So breathe it out, man. Stop having these imaginary conversations with her and go talk to somebody. And if you can't afford a counselor because people are listening and going, I can't, I'd be nice, find a couple of friends. It goes back to that. It demands a witness. Your heartbreak and your grief and your sadness, you got to have other people you can say, hey, I'm not okay with. And I don't need your advice. I need you just to say, man, I'm so sorry. I'll get the next round. Yeah. And as far as the money thing goes, until you get through this process, you're probably not going to make any traction on your finances because, um, you know, it's expensive, it's distracting. And so you're in the middle of a hurricane. And when you're in the middle of a hurricane, you don't work the total money makeover baby steps. Yeah. You, you push pause and you pile up cash to get through the hurricane. Then when the hurricane goes by and it's over, then we assess the damage and we start rebuilding from there. We push play again. We start working the baby steps. Yeah. And that's how you're going to do that as far as your finances go. Trevor is in Salt Lake City. Hi, Trevor. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dr. John. Thank you for taking the call. I'll sure. try and give you a quick download here. Um, my wife and I are in baby step seven. Um, and I just found out yesterday that the company I've been working for for eight years is going to be closing down the division that I work in in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Cool. What do you do for a living? I've got a little bit of time. I work in manufacturing. What do you do? For dental products. I'm a manager. You're a manufacturing manager. Okay. What do you make? Yes. 
uh, dental products. To no, how much money particular. do you make? Oh, sorry, eighty-five thousand a year. Okay, cool. This opportunity for you to get a better job. <laughs> yeah. So the the company is shutting down the division that I work in. Um, they are trying to reabsorb some of the people into other divisions of the company. Um, I I like the company. It's got a great culture, and I and I want to stay there. My question is, is should I just continue? kind of doing what I've been doing with my finances or should I go into sort of a storm mode and just kind of save up some cash until I know things are stable again? What would your advice be? Well, I I think I would go get my new job. Yeah. And I never skip a beat. Okay. Or at least be having conversations all over the place. No, I mean, go get a job making 110 Yeah, and leave tomorrow as soon as you get that job. Okay. Why are you gonna? Why are you gonna, right. you don't you don't need to stay on the Titanic as it goes down. There's no. This doesn't do anything for you. It's not your boat. So you wouldn't look at moving to other departments within the company unless it paid more. Okay. I wouldn't take a pay cut right. to stay with them. They're they're not healthy. They're not doing well. Or if you were if you were a aim a player, they would have said, "Hey, we're closing the division, but you, we're having a meeting with you because we're making sure we exactly. keep you." That would have happened. It didn't happen. Yeah, human nature is that this thing always ends up with a pay cut, and I have often seen it when you decide otherwise, ending up a pay increase. But you need to decide otherwise and start planning now. Don't wait on this to sneak up on you. They've already told you it's coming. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. As we talk about your mental wellness, we talk about your relationships, your job, your career, your money, and your life. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Deanna is with us in Knoxville to start this hour off. Hi, Deanna. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm tickled to be on the show with you guys. Well, we're honored to have you. How can we help? So my husband and I have been handed a pickle. Um, he's been he's being sued for a debt that he co-signed with his now ex-wife. Um, she was supposed to refinance it as part of their divorce. She never did. Now they're coming to him for it. Um, we understand legally there's there's not a lot we can do. I mean he did sign for it, um, but we were wondering if there was there was anything negotiating just anything that we don't have to pay the full the full debt. What what is this on? Um, it was, if I understand everything correctly, it was a car that was repoed. Oh, that's wonderful. How long ago was the car oh, repoed? Oh, I know, it's great. Um, I think probably six years back. Uh, we've been married for three, and it was at least a couple years before then, if I understand it. The repo was while they were still married? Yes. Okay. So they they, they owned a car together, and their car got repoed. Okay. Yeah, he 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 co-signed a car for her. No, he didn't co-sign it. It's his wife. Married. They bought a car together. Well, they okay. Just, yeah, they, he, he just bought a car, and his car. Right, yeah. yeah, and his car got repoed. It happened to be the one she drove, but he got repoed yeah. while he was married before, and now and and okay. the repo was six years ago. If I understand the timeline, I, it's kind of blurry to me. Obviously, this is all before we got together and got married. Um, Did he just hope this was going to go away? Uh, it was something that she was supposed to t- take care of in the divorce. So mm-hmm. it was, and of course she up and disappeared last we heard. She's somewhere in Nebraska running from her debt. 
So <laughs> it's working. So, and so, um, yeah, yeah. It's so the, uh, watch out, Nebraska. <laughs> Look out, Nebraska. Here she comes. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So did you actually get served lawsuit papers? Um, it was sent to um, his old house that we had sold to his daughter. His daughter let us know what was what going on. What is it? Called, a letter or uh, the, are they? Uh, the, yeah, from, from the sheriff, I'm assuming it is. Well, uh, the, I'm the not assuming anything. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Do you have the paper in front of you? I, I don't. Okay. Uh, he has pictures of it on his phone. It, was, it wasn't it was sent to us. We live in Tennessee. He's from Indiana. So this is all over the country right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's so a lot. L- l- let's just stop a second. Okay. Number one, yeah. I doubt you've actually been sued. He, he might have okay. gotten a notice saying they were going to send something to the sheriff, but if they were going to sue him from a six-year-old repossession deficit, they would have done it a long time ago. It's okay. very yeah, unusual it's, to it's get sued on a six-year-old. Okay, well, it's possible they did. It's possible someone sold this debt, okay? So okay. either way, here's what's going to go down, okay? You get in touch okay. with the holder of the debt. Um, Mm -hmm. one of two things has happened. Either it is the original Mm -hmm. holder of the debt or they have sold the bad debt to a bad debt buyer. There Mm -hmm. are people, there are companies that buy old bad debt and then try to collect on it. And they usually pay around a nickel on the dollar for it. Do you have any idea how much money they're asking for? Uh, the paperwork that was sent initially said eight grand. When he called them yesterday, they said twelve on the phone, and I said, "Oh hell no, <laughs> we're not doing, we're not doing." 12. Any, we're not doing any of this, okay? Right. So here and here, because here's the thing. It, let's just say it's ten thousand dollars. They probably paid mm-hmm. five hundred dollars for this debt if they bought it. Okay. That's what they got in it. So anything they get above five hundred dollars is a profit for them. Okay. Right. Now. The uh, it's very difficult to collect a debt across state lines. Okay. For them to execute service on you in Tennessee and actually start getting money from you using a lawsuit to do that is is it's very expensive for them. So they're not going okay. to do it. The probability okay. is very high they're not going to do it. So this is all about posturing and bully in the schoolyard tactics, not about legal realities, okay? So they either paid around $500 for this debt or they're the original holder and just put put those shoes on for a second. It's been six years. If someone owed you money for six years, anything you could get out of them, you would call yourself having one, right? Right, right. All of this translates to you can settle this for around 20 cents on the dollar. It's going to cost you two grand. Okay. I can breathe with that. <laughs> yeah. And so call them and offer them $1,743 as okay. settlement in full and tell them that's your calculation as to what his part actually is after all these years. And that's what we're able to do. Any more than that, and we're just, we don't want to talk to you, you go ahead and sue and do whatever it is you want to do because we're not going to pay it. Okay. And with all of that, between the two of us, he's, he's a lot more, um, easy going about it i'm more of the bulldog do i it's not I they won't talk to you you're not on the debt that's what i want that's what i want to make sure if yeah, I he's have to gonna have to wear big thing. boy pants so you're gonna have to like yeah. uh pull his hair or twist his ear or something and get him a little riled up before he calls him <laughs> i can do that i okay. can do that and deanna i want to challenge something from this point forward okay yeah the world did not hand y'all a pickle you spoke as though this like hail hailstorm sat over your house. This is your husband signed up for this, and yeah, we're, and we I understand that. Okay, so yeah, this is y'all's moving forward. Yeah. Okay, so let's change this. Change the yep. tone. This is Mister the... Easy Going. Didn't take care of business. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, okay. it, this was before he knew better. We went yeah, through. Yeah, I don't he know. Okay. Better ways, so I can't be mad at him. But yes, now you we can. Have a mess to clean up. Yes, yeah. you can. I, I'm mad at him, but we have a mess together. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I'm not mad at him. I'm I, mad at the situation. There you go. Okay, that's good. So yeah, so get him riled up. And here's the thing. Okay, <laughs> start at 1743. You're going to settle somewhere a little over two thousand dollars, give or take. They will okay. take that. It's going to take 
Go ahead and count them. Uh, between five and ten arguments. They're not conversations. They're arguments. Okay. Because you're dealing with an idiot in a cubicle 500 miles away who has a really horrible job. Cleaning septic tanks yeah. is better than collecting on old debt. That's fair. Okay. He, he, he's, okay. he really talks nasty to people all day long and then has to go home and kiss his children right. with that same mouth. It's awful. And so that's the guy you're talking to. And so you have to argue with this guy five to ten different times, and it will land between 1743 start with that number, and then it'll land above 2000 okay. Get it in writing before you send the money. In writing, in writing, okay. in writing, or don't give them any money that they accept that as settlement in full, and then do not give them electronic access to your checking account. Send them a prepaid debit card or a wire. Do not give them electronic access to the checking account and get it in writing. Five to ten conversations. This is an argument. Go. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Dr. John Deloney is my co-host today here on The Ramsey Show. His new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is on pre-sale right now for just 20 bucks. And John, you took uh, your two PhDs, your 20 years of counseling experience, and packed it into a, a book that basically allows people to feel like they're sitting across the table from you. Yeah, that's probably the most common question I get is, do you do private therapy or would you be our coach, our personal family coach or something? I can't do that. But if I was to sit down with somebody and walk them through where they are to where they could be, this would be it, right? This would be the conversations we'd have. Yeah. Ch own your past, change your future. Uh, it's having a positive impact on everybody, everybody who reads it. It's all about mental wellness. And uh, everybody needs a little more mental wellness, um, including the two guys sitting here. So the single 30-year-old is looking to sharpen their mind, the 25-year-old who's out of college and trying to learn how to make m better friends, new friends, the mom who wants to connect to her kids better, uh, people dealing with anxiety, people dealing with abusive relationships, people dealing with just simple boundaries, the interfering mother-in-law. Everyone has a story. And we gave out advanced copies uh, of the book to some listeners. They're going crazy about it. This book has been absolutely life-changing for everyone that's read it, including me. I, I, it was, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing read. Uh, we've taught God and Grandma's ways of handling money around here for 30 years at Ramsey, and now John is doing that for mental uh, wellness and for relationships. It's a complex topic, and he's put the, put the cookies on a shelf where we can all reach them. I pre-order your copy right now at RamseySolutions.com for $20. It is Own Your Past, Change Your Future. For the $20 in pre-order, you will get the audiobook version, the ebook version, and a month of free weekly therapy sessions from the folks at BetterHelp. 
that's a bargain, all for 20 bucks. That's pretty serious right there. Pretty cool. And this book is selling, guys, like crazy. It's going to be our next number one bestseller here at Ramsey. Uh, it actually comes out in April, so just a couple of weeks from now, we'll be mailing them out to you guys and uh, actually be doing the big launch day and everything, official launch day, but it is on pre-sale, and that's where you get the bargains is when you order it on pre-sale. Own your past, change your future. It, you you have to read this book it's an absolute must john's been a lot of fun on this project yeah it's the i don't know writing a book would be what i classify as fun but it's definitely been a process right it's like going to having surgery and uh but yeah now it's now it's out out here hey one of the coolest things of the feedback i got to sit down and, and speak to some of the folks who've been through the who read it and tell me what they thought directly the most that every single person the most common thing they say is it's the first book that I've read in a while that wasn't written at me. It was with me. I felt like we were on this thing together. Hmm. And when I sat down to write this, man, I've just read a thousand articles and books that are experts talking at me. And the whole goal was to say, no, 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 no. We're all in this thing, man. We're going to sit down and let's do this together. Cause I'm walking this thing too with my little kids and my wife and my job and my, and so we nailed it, man. Just, it's just me walking alongside folks. I'm excited. That's fun. That's the way it should be. Jordan is with us. Jordan's in San Antonio. Hi, Jordan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you, and appreciate all you guys do. You help change the world. Appreciate it all. You too, brother. How can we help? Um, so I'm basically just an underperforming franchise owner. Uh, it's a really small franchise, and I'm just kind of looking to see what ideas you guys have for someone who sucks at being a salesman selling a product that um, is higher premium price. I refinish stores for standard starting price, $850, and it's a two-week process. I mean, it's a real marine-grade finish. But in my market in San Antonio, there's a lot of cheap flavor who will do the door in one day for like 150 200 bucks. So I'm struggling to make sales and, and just do my part and not be able to pay my bills. So uh, I had to go get an eight to five job. So just wondering, and I need to get Ken Coleman's book, but I'm studying for ordinations. But once I finish that, I'm going to get his book. But I just want to know what you guys have to, to help me become a better salesman so my business can be what it needs to be. You're finishing what? Finishing doors. So like uh, your wooden um, mahogany, oak, you, your major entrances where you're going to be paying like $30,000 if you wanted to replace something normally. So a mahogany front door on a home, is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you refinish that for eight hundred and fifty dollars. Starting, yes, sir. Okay. All right. And so this is obviously a product for high end neighborhoods only. Yes, sir. Okay. And I suppose, and you know, having been to San Antonio a bunch of times, there's a lot of very nice homes there. I really wasn't aware there were a lot of $30,000 front doors. No, I hear you. Um, it's definitely during the, the territory purchase, I had to look through and uh, go through zip codes with that. They most likely had it. So um, I have zip codes that have that's closest to my area that, that I'm targeting, but I'm basically the only one here. So I actually kind of have the free reign of the whole San Antonio area for now. Yeah, I get that. Um, I mean, but I live in a home that's several million dollars, and uh, the door, the front door, didn't cost eight hundred and fifty dollars, probably. Yeah, I understand that. Um, it was born out of Cincinnati, and there you have homes where, like, the entire front entrance, it would cost them tens of thousands to replace things. And so I just bought into it, thought it was a pretty novel concept, and I've actually, I've got some some jobs, you know, I've landed some businesses. Uh, How many franchisees clients. does this franchisor have across the nation? Uh, I think currently around 10. It's pretty pretty new. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to try to find uh, the top three and go visit with them and ask them what they're doing that you're not doing. Because you have a very yeah. unique, very narrow, very niche market, and finding the potential customer is probably half the battle. And then once you've found them, convincing them, but dude, if I've got a if I've got an ex super expensive imported Italian Mexican whatever uh, something that I brought in from Guadalajara and it's across the whole front of my house, spending eight hundred and fifty bucks on it is nothing. Uh, but I just don't know how many of those they are there are and how to find them. I 
I'm not, I'm not doubting that they're there. I just don't know how to answer that part of the question. But it sounds to me like that, that you know, line, aligning yourself with the potential customers is the biggest thing. You don't need to sell firewood to somebody who doesn't have a fireplace. You know, I mean, it's just so finding somebody that actually has the type of product. And I, I, this is definitely not something that's on every corner. It's an ultra high end house. And I would ask the question, is this what do you want to be doing? Or did you buy into something? You thought it would be cool. You thought they, they gave you a bill of goods by how much money you were going to make. You're a year or two in, and you realize this ain't fun. I'm not making this money. It's not fun. The way I keep getting up every day is because I, I absolutely love my job. Even the crummy parts of it I like. The thing Dave gets up every day is like he's got this mom in his head that he says, I've got to get up here today so I can go help her. There's a, there's an in, there's a drive that is about serving other people. I don't hear that in you at all, my brother. I hear, well, how do I just keep this thing that I don't even like it? I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm not even good at it. How do I keep this thing alive? Man, there's the sunk cost thing. I at some point I said you walk away and get a job that you like, or, or another business, that another you like, business, whatever it is, some, yeah. something that you're fired up about. But if you if you are in love with this and you do want to pursue it and you really really do, what you've got to find is someone who is good at it and find out what they do. It's studying best practices. So I've got a friend in the real estate in the radio business that contacted me the other day, and uh, they're coming in three or four of them with their team to spend a half a day with my team to see what we're doing. They're going to study us because they want to have some of the success level that we have had. And we're going to openly share and not charge them a dime. They're just a friend. They're coming over and hanging out. and But they're going to walk through here with yellow pad notes and ask 5 million questions and go home inspired to do different, do things better, do things different than they were doing before. And that's what you need to do. You need to be that guy contacting one of these other franchisees and going, hey, uh, I'm dying down here. Could I come spend a day with you? And take a vacation day from your 8 to 5 and go up there and do that. And uh, if you're going to pursue it, that's what you're going to have to do. Because I really can't tell you how to find people with front doors expensive enough that they want to spend $850 redoing the door. Yeah. Yeah. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Joe and Kelly are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Welcome. Where do you guys live? In New York, from oh. Miko. Where? Miko. It's in, up in the Adirondacks. Oh, wow. Beautiful area. Yes. Cool. Absolutely. Well, welcome to Nashville. Good to have you down here. All the way down here to do a debt-free scream. Mm-hmm. How much have you paid off? $178,000. Yee! How long did that take? 19 months. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, We started about 260,000 and got to 300 by the end. Wow. What do y'all do for a living? Uh, I'm a nurse anesthetist. Of course. Okay. (laughs) I'm a mom and just started going back to school. Good for you. What are you studying? Uh, Biblical counseling. Oh, good. Good. I like that. That's fun. 
All right. What kind of debt was the one hundred and seventy-eight thousand? Uh, we were, Everything. yeah, we were living the Great American uh, nightmare. <laughs> uh, so we had a little bit of student loan debt left. Uh, caught two cars that we uh, owed a lot on. Um, we had a pool, a boiler, a boiler, yeah. and lots of credit cards. Yes. Hmm. For those of us in the South, what is a boiler? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a furnace. Uh, yeah, up north is a fancy furnace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was something you put your wontons in for dinner, so that is a helpful clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. You but could. It'd be, yeah, yeah. it would be dangerous. It would be, yeah. be messy. Not a good idea. <laughs> not, not a good plan. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome, guys. That's amazing. Good job. So that was, an, that was a pretty intense 19 months. Yes. It was, yeah. yeah. Big change in the Dutcher family. Big mm-hmm. time. So what happened? Tell me the story. You tell your <laughs> awesome story first. So this is embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was working a side hustle at, at a hospital on a weekend. So it's a Saturday. Uh, I go downstairs to get lunch. Uh, I was driving a beautiful Mercedes E63 S at the time, one of the fastest four-door cars in the world. Yes, it uh, is. And uh, I went to buy lunch, and when I gave my debit card, it was denied. I said, oh, that's no big deal. I'll just use my credit card, right? Well, my credit card was maxed out and so I'm standing there I have people I work with behind me offering to pay for my lunch and I, I in that moment I just wanted to stand up on top of the register counter and say I'm not poor like I drive a Mercedes but <laughs> the reality was we were po- I didn't have money in my account and wow. uh, I, I did not want to live that way anymore yeah. Wow. yeah I had just paid something big off and drained our entire account and so he had texted me and was like what is going on I'm like oh no no I can fix it I can fix it he's like we can't fix this this is this is a problem. So I feel like that was when we hit rock bottom, and it was like we we're living a lie. Yeah. We, were, we were not living. There is something about true. being embarrassed and yeah. shamed. Yeah, yeah. I wrote that in the first uh, financial peace book that we did, uh, standing in the cold trying to get a credit card to work, driving a Jaguar to fill it. I couldn't have the money to put gas in the car. I'm yeah. driving a Jaguar. Yeah, just how dumb I was. Yeah, right. but there's something about that where you go. Uh-uh. Right. Mm, this yeah. is wrong. Exactly. Uh-uh. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. So a lot of people get that, have that moment, and they rage and blame everybody else. What What took you to the mirror? Uh, I knew it was my fault. Uh, hmm. I, I had done a decent job with uh, our retirement, and I knew how money worked. I just, I had always been taught that de- you know debt was something that you leveraged to your advantage, and uh I didn't want to die. I was so embarrassed of dying and someone come look at my finances and be like, how did you screw this up so bad? Uh, we would go on trips together and before we left, I would have a panic attack that if we died, someone would look at our finances. And then we'd come home, we lived, we'd mm-hmm. just go back to life. And then we'd go on yeah. a trip again, I'd freak out, then people are gonna look at our finances. So it was like, if we needed- It's like your mother telling you to wear clean underwear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, in case. Yeah. just in case. So yeah, I feel like we had who we are, we had to hit rock bottom to like, mm. like mm. for the Holy Spirit. But we it really, it really wasn't. Done. It really wasn't rock bottom in that, in the sense that like there was no foreclosure or bankruptcy. But it was just this emotional it thing. It just smacked yeah. you in the face. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And it he had worked emo- so hard and made decent money, and I feel like we just decent had managed like really good money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we saw it after we started like not having so much debt. I was like, wow. You're doing all right, You're buddy. You're doing all right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you make Potential. a lot. Of, yeah, you make now a lot. that you don't have any payments for that gum, we yeah. have money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Super. Yeah. Fun. So what'd you do with the car? Oh, this is the you. You didn't get to the. You know, what was the hardest part for me? Uh, I needed to know that that Kelly was going to be 100% on board with this. Uh, but when she said we had two beautiful cars, her car was nice too, and she said I, I have to sell the car. And my she, car. Yeah, when she said that, I was like, man, she's serious. Uh, and so I traded in my beautiful Mercedes for a Honda Civic. At a boy. <laughs> that I still drive. And when he did that, I was like, oh shoot, I better take this seriously because he just gave <laughs> so up something gave, important. You traded both cars. Yeah. 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 Both of them. What were you driving? A Toyota Highlander. Oh, oh no, that's before what you're driving the, now. I'm driving that now. Before I was driving a Ford Expedition. It was so big and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and expensive. And expensive. They're, they're both grieving these cars. Uh, it yeah. still hurts. They were yeah. too. Look, look really how too. tightly he's holding his hands. He's yeah, like thinking no, about I, the car. He's yeah. two <laughs> really good cars, though. They were, yeah. they were, they were great. Nice. They're reasonable they're to yeah. grieve those cars. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Way yeah. to go, guys. So there, the, the, something happens when you start extracting stuff like that out of your life. Uh, it reshapes your heart, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like, do you, um, do we want to live for cars or character? 
Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, I want to be known for my character, not for this Mercedes we drive that we don't even own. So it was a big, big change. Mm. I'm going to drive a Civic and buy other people's lunch. Right. <laughs> well, right. You guys, right. y'all touched on something that happens a lot when two great people who are well-meaning, you paid off something big to help out everybody. Mm. And ended up embarrassing you at work. And you work really hard and we're working a side shift to help the family. And so you're going past each other. Even though you're, you're great people, you love each other, you're just missing each other in the night. And there's something about getting on this budget together and saying, let's do this together yeah. that maximizes everything. Right? Absolutely. Um, you have to be a team. So good. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I think it's contentment and self-control. Mm-hmm. Like to know that. What we have is enough. Oh, you went existential on us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Biblical like counseling. Yeah, like uh, so, yeah, I feel like it's... It is. It is. You're the right. Big deal. I, I completely agree. Yeah. I, I would say it, it took teamwork and a budget. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't underestimate how important having a budget is that you stick to. Yeah. Uh, and teamwork. I mean, the, the these four sitting over here gave up just as much as we did. did. Yeah. And uh, at a time in life where they had gotten used to enjoying things, yeah. And yeah. to have to give it up was tough. Yeah. yeah. Four uh, teenagers that you do a moneyectomy on, that's tough. Yeah. It's they were, way They cooler. were super good about it. To yeah. get dropped off at the dance in the Mercedes than the Accord, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they felt it. They felt it. You know what the hardest thing with that was? That work. I mean, I, I work in healthcare, yep. and I've seen that change from cars in the parking lot, and all five of the changes I saw were all divorces. Uh, so people start asking that question. You're like, no, no, Kelly and I are great. We love each other. Like, I'm still married. That's not what's going on here. The only thing I divorced was a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But another level of, like, you know, embarrassment and kept, yeah. you know, nose down, get it done. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a man. And now you never have to think about it again. Yeah. No. yeah. Praise the Lord, no. It's funny. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. It's great. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And y'all have had the moments where y'all have been, this has been a few months ago, so you've had the moments where you get to keep all of your own money. Yeah. That's when I'm like, wow, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be yes. okay. Yeah. yeah. It was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had one child who asked me, I won't point him out, but uh, when is this budget thing going to be over? Mm. It's like, they felt it too, yeah. you know? And it's like, oh, this is But this is the life. same one was with the booze, right? Yes, the same yeah. one who asked me if she we could stop and get something, and I broke because I had been telling them no for months, and um, she said, you know what, Mom, if it's not on the budget, we can wait. We're almost done. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, you go, girl. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Oh, well, man. you've changed your family tree then yeah. in yes. so many ways, so mm-hmm. very, very well done. All right, we've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you, because if you're not already, you will be soon, now that you've done all of this. Very well done. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone else. And let's bring the kiddos up uh, and have them participate in the process. The uh, the young men and women there, you know, it's not kiddos by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, good job, you guys. Very proud of you guys. You're an incredible family. Very well done. And you've changed everything. Yeah. You've changed everything. The, grandki- the grandkids are changed, and they're not even here yet. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. great. I love it. All right, Joe and Kelly, Mackenzie, Isaac, Olivia, and Haley from New York. 178000 paid off, a Mercedes ectomy. They did it in 19 months, making uh, 260 to 300. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Ready? Three, two, two one. one. We're debt free. Yeah. yeah. This is how it's done, boys and girls. Yep. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. This is common sense for your life, for your mental wellness, for your money, for your relationships. It all runs together with your job, your career. It all is intermingled. Daniel is in New York. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I'd like to say... Congrats to the last people that were debt-free, too. Yeah. Um, that's great. 
Thank you. Um, I've got a I got a fun question. I I got my mole compass kind of going crazy. So yes. my wife and I are on step two, and my grandparents um, have recently passed away. Mm. Um, Sorry, they had a will made back. Thank you very much. They had a will made made in the eighties, um, and then they had it updated after. My mother passed away, and I had an aunt pass away. Mm-hmm. So they had five kids, um, and the second will is not valid. So they're reverting to the original will, which had all five kids in the will, but now two of the two of the children are gone. I have two brothers, so the three of us brothers would be entitled to one of the five shares, basically, of the estate. Correct. My my moral compass question comes into the second will they had made that's not valid. There was an issue with um, witnesses or whatever, but that will stated that the estate goes to the three remaining children. So, so they, would that, have, they would have cut you out. Right, right. Why? I wouldn't have been part of that. Why? Well, it wasn't. Well, they weren't trying to cut out the grandkids. What they were trying to do is they did. while they were living. Well, they yeah, they did. But there was there's a lot more grandkids involved, and they think they were trying to remove um, preferential treatment. Um, oh, so they weren't cutting you out. They were cutting out the two. No, they children. cut out his mom's share and gave it to her brothers and sisters. Oh, they went from okay. a five share to a three share, right? Right, in the right, will that correct. didn't happen, but I mean, we're trying to find out what grandma and grandpa were thinking because that's where your moral compass is spinning from, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So, what's your so, question? So, I mean, I could renounce this, my, you know, I could renounce my share and kind of follow their wishes and basically give my share to the other aunts and uncles. But do I do that, or do I just keep it and throw it toward, um, you know, working on my debt? I don't know why you have an obligation to renounce this. You didn't cause any of this. So your morals are not in question. You're just on the receiving end of a screwed up mess. Right. If if the people involved or the actions uh, were... uh, if they were doing something and you didn't want the money because of what they were doing, like they were engaged in, I don't know, uh, do, they, they were engaged in something that you thought was immoral and they made money from that and you didn't want that money. That that would be a oh, moral reason not. for it you to renounce it. But <laughs> this is you. This is just a screwed up legal entanglement and it's it's kind of all been settled, it sounds like. Uh, well, we're a long ways from that. We're, uh, we... I've got to sign some paperwork to do some probate things and some other lawyer forms, and it's going to be have your, many, have, many months away. Do you have family members who are calling you out, who are challenging you? No, no. Okay. This is – so my, my aunt is the executor of the estate, mm-hmm. um, and I trust her you know, 100% with my life and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just letting us know what's going on. Mm-hmm. We have to – so myself and my two brothers have to sign some paperwork mm-hmm. – because my mom is one of the one of the kids that passed away. Yeah, yeah. So we have to sign paperwork for the lawyers to say yes, we're yeah, we're the descendants. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I do not see a moral dilemma. Okay. Um, because and the second part of that is I also am still confused as to what in the flip your grandparents were trying to pull off with the second will. It doesn't even. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense. It sounds like they didn't think it through very well, because basically they were going to give your aunts and uncles all the money and cut out the two children that had the, the heirs of the two children that had died. And that's not logical unless somebody did something wrong and they wanted to cut them out. But the effect of that second will no, that was that, that was determined to be invalid was that you were cut out. Your mom was cut out. Your mom's share was cut yeah. out. Right. Yes. Yeah, maybe it's God working his way back in. Yeah, I just I it know. doesn't make sense. I think they just screwed up. 
not only did they screw up on the I really think your grandparents didn't even realize what they were doing, probably, is what it sounds like to me. Because, I mean, unless there's somebody, if your aunt says, you know, well, you know, there, there's no logic flow to this. You know, unless some, unless you were trying to carve out a particular branch because of misbehavior or Or they something. just didn't want the money for the grandkids. They just wanted it for kids, and I'm just going to give my kid. Yeah, but that cuts out their dead children's grandkids yeah 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 kids that's just not logical yeah it doesn't make sense so um but it's okay you can do whatever you want to do with your money you're allowed to and it's just i i think your grandparents were were dizzy Hmm. and you know and and that's part of what made the will invalid was that they didn't they didn't follow through on that part right because here's the thing if they'd sat down with an attorney attorney would have said what are you doing Mm -hmm. Just making sure you understand well, this is what you're doing. Yep. And then it would have been properly notarized and properly witnessed. Mm-hmm. Instead, they just bought this thing over at home. They bought the will kit at Home Depot or something and, <laughs> you know, and then did the thing instead of doing a proper will with, you know, that's why with Mama Bear Legal Forms, we tell you to go there. You get a state specific will and each state has unique laws, some somewhat unique laws potentially. And witnesses are very different in some states. Some states don't require a witness. Some states require four. Some require one. Some require notarization. Some don't. Mm-hmm. And so you need those exact steps in the state that you reside in when you die. And that's why we use your Mama Bear legal forms. So, so you get the thorough, and the will is actually valid then. So in your case, Daniel, I, I appreciate that you're open-handed with this and you're compassionate towards your uncles and aunts and you're, you're noble enough to want your grandparents' wishes to go forward. But I'm personally a little bit confused about your grandparents' wishes. I don't know what they were trying to accomplish. I kind of think they're dizzy. Mm. I think they were dizzy. And so I'm not worrying about this. I'm signing the papers. Let's just go forward. I'm not going to be mad about it if it doesn't work out. But as long as it just keeps going this way, I'm going to go this way. And let it unfold. And it just is what it is. So, hey, thanks for the call. That's an interesting discussion. John, it is so important for every adult to have a will. A valid will. Gosh, man. I I just can't think of a more childish way to be a grown-up than to not have a will. And yet 78% of the people listening to us don't have a will. There is zero correlation that if you fill out a will, it means you're going to die soon. There's a hundred percent correlation that if you fill out a will, you care about your family and your estate. Even if you don't think you have much of an estate, not dragging your poor family through the court systems and through the weird cousin that comes out of the woods and all the stuff, man, Jesse. And I did it. I, I don't want to push something that I don't use. I got mama bear will and did mine families and it's quick and it's not painful it is painful because you're discussing your death it's awkward and weird well, my dad's a homicide detective that ship sailed to my house but, but for, yeah, for but, i mean it's it for most painful. people it is it is for most people it is awkward and weird right i mean we have the ramsey estate meeting once a year and we tell you everybody sell tickets to that you leadership can... team we should because it's like a monty <laughs> python meeting i'm feeling much better it's just a flesh wound <laughs> but yeah it's like we discuss dave's death thoroughly for a couple of hours once a year you got me it. there you gotta it's do awkward. it you gotta do it it's weird but yeah so what's gonna happen if he dies this year i'm here i'm here don't talk about me in the third person yeah but yeah but it's just the whole thing but you gotta do it guys it's diligence it's saying i love you having life insurance to take care of your wife your kids your husband your kids your dog your whatever i love having you. life insurance is vital having a will that's valid and that everyone knows where it is that your family knows where it is Uh, jeez this is the ramsey show hey it's john deloney co-host of the ramsey show did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. 
You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones as we talk about your relationships, your mental wellness, your boundaries, your job, your career, and your money. We talk about all of it right here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ian is going to start us off in Guam. Hi, Ian. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. Half a day. Um, I'm doing well. I was hoping that uh, you and Jack could help me today answering this question. Um, currently in Davis at 46, we have a payoff car. A family is growing, and I'm trying to find out how do we upgrade a vehicle uh, without going back into debt, and especially with this time, but, but how do we do that? Well, I think you know you have to <laughs> save the money. <laughs> Yes. So how do you get? Um, how do you save the money? I mean, what what is your income? Uh, currently about ninety thousand. That's good. Um, so what is your current car worth? Uh, about it's estimated between eleven to fifteen trade in. Eleven um, to fifteen is a pretty good range. So we okay. probably can uh, get fifteen in this current world that we live in. Okay, so let's call it fifteen. What are you upgrading to? What what kind of price range car would you buy? So upgrading from a Corolla to hopefully a full size SUV. Uh, just with the amount of stuff that we have, uh, we're traveling the rest of the year doing travel nursing. So um, we're trying to go back this day. How much and, money? Uh, currently saved up. About, no, how much will the uh, SUV cost? About twenty-five to thirty-five. That's our range. Our budget is twenty-five to thirty-five. So we're looking. You don't have a budget. You don't have any money. You have a budget once you've got a money, right? Yes. Okay, well let's call it twenty five. Okay. If you sell yours for fifteen and you're gonna buy an SUV for twenty five, you need ten. You make ninety. How long does it take to get ten when you make ninety? Pretty quick. Okay. That's how you do it. Okay. I mean that was like some pen and teller style magic right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> So, brother, where are you where are you getting stuck? Something that that that, that seems yeah. Yeah, I know. I know it sounds it sounds pretty silly, but no, no, no. I'm with you, um, man. I've gotten stuck too. Yeah. Just where are you stuck? What's 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 messing with you? You got car fever for a car you can't afford. And you want to go buy it today? Is that what's messing with you? Uh, no, it's just that um, our car is all the way in on the other other side in Maryland, and we're trying to go you know closer to like washington or Hawaii, but my my dilemma is we have to you know some one of us will have to go in and trade it in or we can do it online and it's just the hassle of should we do it online or should we just go back in person trade it in because that's just you know a headache for us as far as trying to upgrade and using a vehicle okay, you don't have a vehicle a in guam right correct sorry what was that you don't have a car in guam right we're renting a car. Okay. And that's our issue. You're military, is, you wanna, I'm guessing. No, travel nursing. Travel nursing. Okay, so you're renting a car in Guam. How long are you going to stay in Guam? To July. Okay. And so getting a car in Guam is going to cause a problem because you're going to turn around and get rid of it, right? Or you're going to have to ship it somewhere. Yes, and that's that's another issue that when we, it's not. I'm not sure if we should keep paying renting a car if we're if when we move back to the states, or we should just get our car that we have paid off. Where are you going in July? To, uh, it's up in the air right now because it goes contract by contract, so we can decide where we want to go. So we're hoping either Washington or Hawaii, one of those two, somewhere. But it's like I said, it's up in the air. It's okay. just we don't want to pay rental. We don't want to rent a car. Yeah, moving you know, a car from year. Guam to Hawaii would cost more than the stupid car. <laughs> yeah. So we're not doing that, right? So you're not going to buy a car that you're going to keep for very long. If you buy a Correct. car in Guam, you're going to turn right around and sell it in July. Mm -hmm. And if you wait until July, somebody's going to have a couple of three annoying days because one of you is going to fly out to 
the East Coast and deal with the car, buy a new one, because you're going to have cash by then. It's you know what I would do? I'd keep my life back. real clean and real simple. You guys are making bank right now because you're doing travel nursing. You're make, you, you said you're making 90. Is that all they're making between the two of you? Uh, no, just, just my wife right now. Oh, okay. What do you do? Uh, I'm a financial coach with Dave Ramsey, actually. But <laughs> um, so that's my. I'm just stay at home and I do my financial coaching. Okay. Um, All right. It's just you, that, you need to get on. A pl- never... You need to get on a plane and go to Maryland and sell your car. Okay. And then when you get then back with it. the when when you get back with the money, you can decide whether to buy a car in Guam that you're going to sell in July or whether to rent from now until July. And then when you land in Hawaii uh, or Washington, then you buy a car. Got it. Yeah, that's my plan. It just took me a minute to catch up with what was still getting you. It's a long weekend. It's an annoying weekend or three days. Just get on the plane and go sell your car. There's people wanting to buy cars like crazy right now. There's a shortage. You can sell it in 20 minutes. Just, you know, put it on Craigslist or Trader.com or something and and go ahead and get three buyers lined up to look at it right after you land at the airport. Drive over to where it's sitting. Meet them there. Make sure the battery, one of your friends went by and charged the battery and shined the tires and um, sell the stupid thing. Get back on the plane. Go back home with a pocket full of cash. Or have a friend who you trust that you left the car with, have them get it detailed and then have them sell it and tell me to give them 500 bucks of the sale. Yeah. And be done. Yeah. You have them for taking care of it for you. Give them, give them a gift card to the steakhouse. I don't care. Whatever. But yeah, it's just uh, what's, ca- what, what's happening here. It's not really a car problem. It's that you all aren't, you haven't, you don't know where you're going to be. And once you know where you're going to be, it's going to clear up all this. But you know you're not going to be in Guam past July. So. You know, I'm not sure you buy a car there. I think you probably, it's only a couple months. Let's just keep renting it. I wouldn't screw with it. Yep. But I'd go ahead and get that other one sold because you're not going to use it either. It's just sitting over there. Put the money in your pocket and buy a car when you land. Yeah, that's what I am going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take it one step further. Don't buy a car in Guam. Nope, absolutely not. Go to the States, sell your car, or send, have your friend do it for you, one of the two, like John said, and um, rent until July. And then when you decide, when you move to the next place, go buy a car with cash. All right, let's, let's, I want to walk through this real quick, okay? Okay. Uh, we got time before we go to break. Lots of variables, lots of moving parts that can be paralyzing. It feels chaotic in our heads, and so we just go, uh, you're talking to a coach, right? This is what he does for a living. He helps other people. It just feels like a lot. And what you just did in quick form is, all right, let's put all these variables down. What can I control? I can sell that car. I'm going to get on a plane. It's going to cost me some money. I'm going to go sell that car. Number two, I'm not going to buy a car until I know where I'm going. Number three, where we're going is is unknown. Cool. I'm just going to sit with a pile of cash. And that's what I can control in this thing. And then the dust clears. And let me just tell you, the, the stuck part, the anxious part, the stress of all this, as soon as you have your little game plan laid out, evaporates. Goes away. Evaporates. The ambivalence, the not knowing will kill you. Yes. You have to get a clear path, start checking boxes, start walking down the checklist before you take the airplane off into the air. It's every pilot does that. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information.
Well, here in Tennessee, the grass is starting to get green, the pollen is out, the hay fever is kicking in, and that can only mean one thing. Real estate sales are getting ready to get even hotter. Winter breaks out, spring starts to come in. How? I don't know how you could get hotter than it has been, but I think it's going to. It's going to be, I mean, people are back at it, man. And listen, if you don't want to make, listen, you make a mistake um, buying uh, dentine gum, <laughs> you can survive that mistake. You don't want to make a mistake buying a house, selling a house. That could be a $100,000, $200,000 mistake. Don't buy something you don't understand. Do you know where you start? You are, are you sure you're financially ready for a mortgage? Are you confused about how the buying process works? Start by connecting with an endorsed local provider. These are agents I trust. They are Ramsey trusted. Our ELPs will help guide you through the entire home buying or home selling process. They're here to teach you every step of the way so you feel confident in this big money decision. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent and you can connect with one of our Ramsey trusted endorsed local provider agents ramseysolutions.com slash agent shaylen is in saskatchewan hi shaylen how are you good how are you better than i deserve what's up so my husband and i own a small construction business and we are often making large material purchases upwards of ten thousand dollars so how do we do this without using credit cards? We're debt-free personally and with our business, but we're going to use a credit card to make business purchases online and over the phone. And we don't have a problem with paying it off, but we want to get away from credit cards. So what debit cards do you recommend for a large online business purchases? You'll have to customize your debit card with your local bank the way we have. Because a large okay. singular purchase won't fly with most debit cards unless you've got it set up. Most of them have pretty right. stringent daily limits and single purchase limits. And yeah. uh, so, but you can have that customized. Like, you, you know, I don't walk around with a debit card that's on, that's limits me to a thousand bucks. I mean, I, I may buy something yeah. expensive because I've got the money. And so obviously the relationship I have with the bank allows me to do that. And you've got to do that with a good local bank and set your debit card up. And then obviously you have to build up the, the uh, business savings. It's called retained earnings to be able to cash flow this on behalf of your clients until you get the money back from them. Obviously, when you're ordering something, you're passing that cost on to your customer and you're getting the yeah. money back after as they pay a draw on the construction or as they pay for the construction project being completed, one of the two, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're just, it's a 30 day thing maybe. Uh, and and okay. so, you know, you're just going to, you need a, you need a uh, prime the pump one time. If you had $20,000 cash sitting in your business checking account and it just rolled over all the time, it would drain down yeah. some and then it would come back up when you got paid and then it would drain down mm -hmm. some, and then it would come back up when you get paid. And you just set a limit. I don't go below $15,000 cash in my business retained earnings because I need that much to cash flow these purchases and so on. And so, yeah, it may take you a little while to get there. Uh, the other thing we did, because we didn't have the money to, to cover it in, in the early days like that, if we were purchasing something here, like uh, let's say we go and buy, um, in the old days, maybe we buy 10,000 copies of a book that we're getting ready to sell. And then we ship those books out to bookstores and we ship them out through the distributors. And it may be two, three months before we get paid on those. And so what we had to do was just go ahead and, you know, build the money up to pay for the order, period. And then when the money came back in off of the sale of those books, it was as if we, uh, as if it was all free money, you know, because we didn't have anything. We, owed, won. we didn't have anything owed against it. You know, it was a, the hundred percent check, right? We'd already paid for the cost of goods sold. I already paid for the materials. I've done a few home projects over the years where the builder comes and says, "Here's what your material costs are going to be to get out the door to get started," and they required that up front. Up front. Yeah. And so I actually gave them the money that way. I'm not going to walk, and they're not. So, um, and I've heard horror stories about that where a GC can walk off with your prepayment, but. I like that option too. Yeah, change your terms. That's what I was leading to yeah. was on the books. We had to, if somebody wanted a, an unusually large order that we couldn't cash flow, mm -hmm. we just had to require a deposit of 50% up front. And that pays for the books. And that actually paid for more than the books. It paid right. for some more because yep. we, we don't have 50% in them. So uh, our cost of goods sold is not that high. 
And, and so we had to change the terms of working with our customer. But and, I love that what you said about if you get twenty or thirty thousand bucks in your account, you become your own bank. Yep. And I love that way of operating. Yeah, and it's just it's real clean. I'll tell you the other thing that's weird is it, it changes what you're buying and how you're buying it. Uh, because it's like real money when you're doing it with debt, it doesn't feel like it's real money. But when you're pulling your money out of your checking account to make this purchase, you're like, uh, uh, you have this moment where you just make sure it's all right. You measure to the fence post. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't think about that when you're just slapping a plastic down. We got to take every later. Just get it. Just get it. We got to get this going. We got to get this. And you get sloppier when you're using borrowed money. Less, less wise. Uh, Catalina is with us in New York City. Hi, Catalina. How are you? I am great. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? I'm so excited to, to talk to you guys. Um, so I am just, we, myself and my husband, we're just starting now to try to pay off some debt, right? Um, and I've just started listening to your radio show about a month ago. And I have a lease, which I know was a stupid idea. And I'm about halfway through my three-year lease. And I'm wondering if I should buy it out or continue until I'm done and then... Because if, if I buy it out, it's it's not going to be in cash. It would be to finance it. Or should I just wait until the lease term is done? Yeah. And then... Um, There's uh, no reason <laughs> to buy it out with financing. That doesn't serve any purpose. Um, right. Okay. And so run it out to the lease term is done. Turn the car in. Make sure you're not over on your miles and you don't have excessive wear and tear so they don't ding you again at the turn in. And also okay. make sure you have the money saved up to buy you a little car of some kind. Mm-hmm. So you don't don't plan okay. on financing a car when you turn this in. You got to break this cycle. Right, right. Yeah, okay, that's the and big thing. So you got eighteen months to get that ready. Will you be debt free except this when you do the eight in, within eighteen months? No, no, no. We're just starting with our our debt free journey. So we've we've just paid off all plastic. So there's no more plastic. Good um, way to go. That felt weird, didn't it? But it, yeah, but there's still like there's one personal loan, there's one um, student loan. Mm -hmm. And there's our mortgage. So okay, not counting your, but not counting you know. your mortgage, will you be done in 18 months? Uh, pro uh, probably not. I think it's going to take a little longer. Okay. All right. Well, that'd be cool. I mean, if, if, if you happen to get there, and then when you turn the car in, that was one of the last few things that happened and to make you debt-free except the mortgage, then that'd be a cool thing. But again, you've got to plan for the turning in of the car. Uh, make sure you're not overrunning the miles. Make sure you're not doing excessive wear and tear. Uh, so you don't get an extra check you have to write when you turn the car in, um, and then the uh, and make sure you've saved up some money to get a little car of some kind. And plan for the second thing too. So Dave's like plan for the money part. I would almost guarantee that the car you're leasing is going to be nicer than the car you're going to be able to buy. Prepare yourself for that. It often is like I'm I'm leasing this cool Lexus or this brand new whatever. And now I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy the previous caller from another hour. I'm gonna buy their uh, used Corolla from Massachusetts. Right. Prepare yourself for that. It's part of your journey here, and it's gonna feel like you lost something. You're not. You're winning. No, you're actually now admitting what you really can afford. There you go. Instead of running, acting like you can afford more than you can, which is what debt does for you. It, it's a it's a form of pretending. Aiden is in Pueblo, Colorado. Hi, Aiden. How are you? Oh, well, I'm doing well. How are you, Dave? Doing better than I deserve. Hey, I goofed, man. I brought you up right 30 seconds before a commercial, so I'm going to put you back on hold. We're going to come back to you after the break, and uh, or as soon as we can, one of the two. Is there a debt-free after the break? There's Okay. Going to come back to you after this next segment, Aiden. So you got to hold a little bit longer. I apologize. Um, I wasn't watching the clock. Goofy, bad talk radio stuff here. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Reese and Courtney are on the line. It says on my screen, you guys are debt-free. Congratulations. Hey, thank you, Dave. Yeah. Welcome. How much did you pay off? Uh, We paid off uh, $77,231. How long did this take? Yeah, over a span of 18 months. 18 months. Good. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started at around 64000 and our kind of peak income was around 102000 Good. What do you guys do for a living? Uh, I work for a small uh, computer repair shop, uh-huh. and uh, Courtney works for the for the state of Michigan Health Department. Cool. What kind of debt was your 77000 Oh, It was a little, little bit of everything, main thing being student loans. We also uh, had a car loan, a couple of car loans in there, and credit cards. Yeah. Wow. Way to go, man. So how long have y'all been married? Uh, for just under two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it'll be June. June will be two years. So yeah. Okay, so you get married, come home from the honeymoon, and looked at 77000 and went, uh-oh, this is grown-up land. we got to kill this. What happened? Tell me the story. Yeah, so it's actually, yeah, so we, we saw the debt. We had, a you know, goals as a couple, and our, it was like part of our marriage goal was to pay that all off. But the first, you know, I'd say probably about, six or seven months or so we weren't like super serious uh, about getting after that debt it wasn't until um i got kind of plugged back into your show and started listening uh more to the advice and everything else and i was like okay no there's there's a plan this is this is doable and um we got really serious about it so we were doing you know just one job a piece for a little while and then once we're like oh let's see if we can really go after this and that's when we both picked up uh, multiple jobs started, you know, doing whatever we could to just increase our shovel as big as we could. And that really like the amount of improvement we saw over the last, the tail end of that 18 months was so much greater than the first part there. Yeah. So Courtney, this, your, your new husband starts listening to this crazy guy on the radio and he comes on with this crazy idea that we need to sacrifice like crazy and get out of debt. What did you think? Do you think he'd lost his mind? (laughs) No, not at all. I, uh, Gosh, was a bit of a minimalist even before we were married, just trying to do what I can to make that student loan less. So I have my master's degree, which is where a lot of my student loan came from is, you know, six years of education. So Mm -hmm. trying to make that as small as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was just encouraging to see Reese come in and just have that fire. Like I think it brought a lot of the momentum for us. Yeah, "Yeah, we're going to do this. But now we did it like really seriously and come back on our budget. And so I think it was just the momentum that kind of made that duration to pay it off a little bit shorter yeah that's amazing well done what's your master's in public health all right uh, helps with, uh yeah it's fitting right you had, <laughs> yeah. had a boring so. few years yeah it <laughs> <laughs> was a good time to have it i finished in uh, 2019 and then pandemic hit and that's kind of what was the open door to step <laughs> hey, congratulate it'll all be downhill from here so congratulations <laughs> <laughs> hopefully <laughs> yeah. pretty cool guys what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I'd say it's, you know, just finding a plan and sticking to it. So we were very thankful to have, uh, have your, your plan, the baby steps and everything else. Um, and just having that once that was in place, it was just, okay, we'll, we reference this, we stick to this. And then no matter, we know that no matter how hard it gets or how like any complications come along, it's like, okay, we know that the plan works we're gonna and we're just gonna stick to it and it came it came through for us so that was uh, a big deal there Mm -hmm. who were your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you so we had uh thankfully plenty of people encouraging us and helping us out through along this way Uh, kind of the ones who stand out the most are uh, my parents Mm -hmm. uh we have some some good friends Kristen, Kristen and kyle and uh and our aunt linda um i also even though they weren't a part of this particular process, I want to also give a quick shout out to my original 
uh, financial, financial Peace University uh, leaders, Dave and, or sorry, Mike and Kathy, uh, they were, you know, put the spark in me five years ago. And then since then that was, uh, was able to ignite that fire for getting through this debt here. So yeah. definitely uh, had, had lots of people. Those are just uh, the tip of the iceberg, really, when it comes to who, mm-hmm. were, who were helping us out. For sure. Cool. What was the what was the best disagreement y'all had? Oh, that's a good question. Oh goodness. Um, <laughs> I think if anything, it's just uh, now just trying to figure out like, all right, now that debt's paid off, like, what's the next big step? How do we spend uh, all this money this hours, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. We um, exciting news are expecting a baby in September. So Yay! To- congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Trying to figure out what the next goal is. So, you know, mm-hmm. saving up for a house or saving up for baby or whatever it might be. So I think that's the most, I don't know, relevant thing for right now. What's the next for step? Money. And we're so thankful that we don't have a mountain of debt to worry about in this pro- process. Either. So it's like we were, we're secure in, in knowing that and knowing that whatever money we have is money that we get to put into our future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it changes everything. Way to go, you guys. Very, very well done. Very proud of you. Good work. Good work. We've got a copy of uh, Baby Steps Millionaires for you, how ordinary people built extraordinary wealth, how you can too. We want you to finish the Baby Steps, become millionaires in the process, and that's the next chapter in your story, okay? Absolutely. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone and get them stirred up as well. So very well done, you two. Very well done. Reese and Courtney, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 77000 paid off in 18 months, making 64 to 102. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. All right. Three, two, one. We're debt-free. That's how it's done, boys and girls. Reese and Courtney, way to go. Man, that's it. Beautiful job. Well done, well done. All right, as promised, I'm going to try to get Aiden in here from Pueblo, Colorado. Hi, Aiden. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Right on. Thank you for having me, Dave. Sure. I'm not going to psych you out this time. What's up? How can we help? <laughs> well, uh, so um, just a little quick you know, I don't want to make it too long-winded here, but uh, the high school that I graduated at, I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm married, and uh, the high school that we went to uh, it made us take baby steps to graduate. We actually had to take your whole your whole course and, and go through the thing. And uh, so we come out of high school with pretty good idea stuff, and um, we've, we've had some fairly good success in the industries that we're in. And I've got a handful of money to invest, um, and I had a, you know, I had some questions on how to how to get it invested. Okay, how much money? Hundred thousand dollars. At twenty three years old. Yes, sir. Well done, wow, brother. Wow, way to go, man. Mic drop. Good yes, job, sir. man. Yes, sir. Where'd you get that money? Uh, uh well we grew uh we grew up in a real small town and um every I didn't didn't buy cars. I mean I still drive old crappy cars and stuff and uh we found a little property to buy that me and my wife wanted to buy and we bought it. And then we had an industry, a massive industry boom right in our little town. No one could have expected it. And we turned a house for quite a profit. Um, and then right after that, I got into the real estate industry. And so I'm a real estate licensee here in the state of Colorado. And she's in a pretty specialized uh, commercial beekeeping industry. And we just put a bunch of money back. You know, with all of your stuff, the whole, okay. you know. So do you, are you, uh, do you, do you own the home that. you live in? Uh, no, so I actually rent a home, but it's on. We're on a uh, a river bottom ranch, and I run cattle on this ranch that pays for the house. Uh, so we don't make a lot of money on the cows, but they they keep the house free essentially. Okay, so do you want to buy a home? Uh, I would like to buy a home, but I would like to invest. Uh, I we, we live in kind of a funny area right now, and we kind of want to see what the way things are going to go or if we want to stay in Colorado or what. But Okay. Well, I, I only put money in two things, and I don't tell people to do otherwise. Uh, you can certainly put money in whatever you want, but I buy good growth stock mutual funds, and I buy real estate that I pay cash for. Those are the two investments I do. In your situation, I think you just dump this into some mutual funds. Click SmartVestor, find the SmartVestor Pro in your area at RamseySolutions.com, the person we recommend for investing, and uh, sit down with them, tell them what your goals are, and they'll help you place that money into, the, into some good mutual funds with some safety 
and uh, you can access it anytime you need to later for the next thing you're going to do with it. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 3, 3, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. William Arthur Ward said, when we seek to discover the best in others, we somehow bring out the best in ourselves. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure, you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Cheyenne in Tennessee. Shana writes, my boyfriend and I are going to be engaged soon. He knows and agrees with my dreams of being a stay-at-home mom and homeschooling our children, but he thinks I should sacrifice more for our future marriage. All right. This sacrificing talk is based on him trying to get me to move across the country so he can go to school and pursue a career. He had never talked about moving until recently, and he's beginning to shame me and even called me selfish. I was raised believing it's the man's job to leave and cleave and provide for the family. At what point does the woman need to sacrifice, if at all? Good Lord. You should not get engaged soon. Yeah. Neither one of you are ready for marriage. No, not at all. Even close. And you're conflating a little bit of scripture and a little bit of folk wisdom and a little bit of what you want to do and a little bit of what he wants to do and a little bit of 10 years from now and a little bit, this is a mess. You know, pull this sucker apart, man. But at the end of the day, the idea of being a stay at home mom and homeschooling and somebody saying, that's not enough. You need to do better. That's one conversation. Um, sacrificing like, Hey, I got a job right out of school and this is, we're going to have to live in this part of the country for a little while and we're going to work hard. That's like another conversation. And then the shaming each other is another conversation. And then this, it's a man's job to do. That's another conversation that y'all need to have before you do any talk. At what woman does, at what point does the woman need to sacrifice if at all? Ooh. That's a 10-year-old, 12-year-old emotional question. Right. That's a little baby question right there. And, hey, I know you want to be a stay-at-home mom and homeschooling, um, but you're just going to have to sacrifice. That's an 11-year-old response. (laughs) Man. This whole thing is just, you guys are, no, please don't get married. No. No. You're going to kill each other. I mean, you you know, you you guys got some work to do that's pretty serious. (laughs) But it'd be fun to talk about a couple of these things for the heck of it. Yeah, pick some. I, I, we're kind of kind of outside, kind of outside the, uh, the, uh, the 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 context of of her actual situation, which we've just you know pretty well, you know, didn't give the answer she wanted. Yeah. So, at what point does the woman need to sacrifice, a, if at all? Uh, I don't know where you get this idea that both of you don't sacrifice for the rest of your lives. You serve one another. Uh, Bible, to the Bible, Bible, Bible says, submit yourselves one to another. Yeah. And so if you're going to be selfish and sit over here like a little princess on a little throne and say, the woman doesn't have to sacrifice. The man is supposed to work and bring me stuff. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> this is this is just not marriage material. And that's really what that sounded like when I heard it. Yeah. But I, and I read it. I, I went after him thinking. Oh, I'm going to go after him, oh. too. I'm not done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, this, yeah. Sa- this idea of sacrifice, it should be a race 
So who can serve Race the, the other one? To the bottom. How can I outserve? If you do that, if you live like that, and she lives like that, your marriage will be the greatest of anyone you know. Yeah, and you're going exactly the opposite direction, both of you. What's the least amount I can yeah. do and get by with the rules? So listen, if if your daughter, Cheyenne, comes to you in 15 or 20 years, hopefully 20 plus years from today, the daughter that you don't yet have, um, comes to you and she's 20 years old and says her soon-to-be fiancé is shaming her, what would you tell her? I know what I would tell one of my daughters. Run. Right. And what's his address? I know some guys. Yeah. I can help him with his shaming. <laughs> That's right. So um, yeah, we have a hillbilly answer for that. But yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, um, you know, he's shaming you and you think that's and then you and we're about to be engaged soon right. and this is how he handles our conflicts right you know because he's a little boy and he's throwing a little fit on the cereal aisle and says well you should just do whatever i want to do because i'm the man <laughs> and i'm like well you're not a man though you're a little boy in a man's body and the way <laughs> So I, we were yeah. we were living in Texas. I lived there my whole life, and then I got an incredible opportunity. I had a couple of colleagues that were over at this wonderful school called Belmont. We talked to them, and then I sat down with Sheila and said, "Hey, there's this potential opportunity here." She could have said, "You never talked about moving before. This thing's dead," or she could have said, "Tell me more about this." And I would have said, "Here's the career part. Here's the family part. Here's this part." And she would say, "Oh, that's exciting. Let me get involved in this, and let's let's think this through and talk this through." Yeah. One of those is about us, and one of this is about me. And it sounds like both of the. Well, I can only speak to the author. It sounds like the author has a picture of her life that she has already mapped out, and that she is waiting for some guy to show up and make it all happen. And that's not how marriages work. Period. That's not how life works, man. Life goes sideways on us. Yeah. So I'll teach you to write I, us an email. I don't, man. <laughs> <laughs> just attach them to the whipping post, man. It's just like, uh, but hey, guys, th this is, um, yeah, the language is all there and it's none of it good. All right. Jennifer is in Tallahassee, Florida. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you, John and Dave, for taking my call. Sure, what's up? Um, and I have a question about staying home and homeschooling. <laughs> That's okay. We We're won't not shame you. That. No, We're not against I'm that. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> we won't shame you. Watch this. This is how it's done, okay. dude from Tennessee. All right, go for it. <laughs> Okay, so we're on baby steps um, four, five, and six. Um, my husband and I are 40 and 42. Um, and we decided that I should quit my job. Um, I've been homeschooling for the past nine years, um, but I have worked part time for almost all of those nine years. And, and you're going to drop um, the part time the job. I'm just going to drop the part-time job. Cool. How much were you a, making? At a kind of a bad job. Um, oh, next to nothing. I make about 20000 a year, and okay. they pay me as an independent and what does he contractor, make? so after taxes. What does he make? Um, 140 Okay, so he makes 140 yeah, he, You used to make twenty, and now you don't. Whoopee, yeah. you're okay. Are what? you worried about the identity part? You're going to yeah, lose yourself? Yeah, because I've been a teacher for... Uh -huh. um, about 20 years yeah. and I've been working at this private school and the pay has been terrible and the work's been terrible and just the entire job has been super <laughs> stressful. Um, but, 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 but it's still it, all I've done. It was your identity to be a teacher and you did have a place where you got to, you had to, you had to shower, you had to show up to, and you got to meet with other adults. And I, what I hear folks when they, when women say I'm going to quit my job and stay at home for a season there's this identity loss because I was a this. I was a teacher. I was a this. And now I'm just a. So it's important when you make this transition to have a group of friends that you're going to hang out with regularly at once, twice a week, a group of girlfriends you're going to hang out. And you're going to have to work hard to shift into a new identity, what that's going to look like. I think financially, Dave, I think they're fine financially. What was your question? Yeah, I, we have I, about I half a million ahead, in, in retirement. Yeah. So what are you worried about? Um, that I'm not contributing. Um, you know, we've always, we've always tried to just live, ever since we were first married, just live on my husband's income and put mine towards, you know, first it was towards the house down payment and, you know, then it was toward, you know, going towards the kids' college funds and, hey, Jennifer, and things like that. You but guys it, can make it on 140, kid. 
the greatest contribution you can give to this your family is to be well. Take care of yourself. Quit working at a crappy place that underpays you and doesn't value you. Be whole. Take care of your kids. Partner up with your husband. That's the greatest contribution you can give to your family right now. You're going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine. Absolutely. Well done. Good choice. Good choice. That puts us hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com show.